Kumusta Bulsuan? I am very happy to welcome you all to the third Bulsu webinar series for students entitled Tricks on How to Embrace E-Classroom, Discarte sa E-Classe. With the pandemic, the education sector is undergoing a massive transformation, most especially in terms of delivery processes. At large, the teaching learning procedure has started to embrace a variety of online and remote learning tools, among others, in order to facilitate, simplify, and contextualize the entire educational process. This webinar entitled Tricks on How to Embrace E-Classroom, Discarte sa E-Classes, will pave the way for more virtual spaces and introduce remote learning at scale to you, our dear students. The objectives of these webinars are for you to learn significant strategies and tactics on e-learning, explore e-learning transition strategies, and the conditions that Bulsu has published, reassess e-engagement and mindful learning practices in support of building the capabilities of independent and struggling students. We know it is very different time for everyone as we transition to our new normal. However, change brings opportunities as well as challenges. Kaya ang tanong ko sa inyo, Bulsuan, Ano ang magiging diskarte mo ngayong new normal? I am your moderator for today. My name is Lilibet Antonio from the College of Information and Communications Technology. If you have a question about this webinar, please feel free to type in the comment box your name, campus, and your question. Reminder to all students, please refrain from commenting such unrelated and redundant messages. Right? So, so much of that. Let us now settle down as we offer this webinar to our Almighty God in prayer to be followed by the singing of the national anthem and the Bulsu hymn.
ang awit ng Pilipinas. He was invited to speak in 
largest local and international event of different organizations with needed outside services, including CBCU. As a researcher and development scientist, he has published numerous research work by papers in high impact international journals of education, nursing, and constructive integration of technology in teaching and learning. He is one of the few authors who has initially published papers on the interesting era, the fourth industrial age revolution, or the 4IR, and how it will impact healthcare science and education in the near future. At present, he is the director of the Research Development and Innovation Center of Our Lady of Fatima University and president elect of the Big Gap Center of the Sigma Sigma Pro International Order Society in Thursday. He's a board and global recognition for the world. So this is the recent view. He is the first non-American scholar of the highly competitive Global Emerging Faculty Leadership Academy of Sigma and Chamberlain University in Indianapolis, Indiana for its 2018 and 2019 awards. An excellent awardee of the University of Central Graduate School for its alumni homecoming. 2019, a Gawad Vicente M. Santos Awardee for Leadership in 2019, and an emerging nurse researcher authority of Sigma's 30th Nursing Research Congress held in Calgary, Alberta, Canada, last July 2019. The first Filipino to receive such recognition from Sigma. He was also awarded by the provincial government of Malacan as the 2019 Info Kapatan or Golden Youth Awardee under the Professional Worker category under the Proclamation 139-2019 and recently one of the Global Nurse Leadership Institute Academy Scholars of the International Council of Nurses for 2020. Academic achievement. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, let us all welcome Dr. Michael Joseph S. Okay, good afternoon, everyone, and good afternoon, and thank you, Ma'am Lily Beth, for, for that very warm introduction. So uh, before I, I start my presentation this afternoon, I just want to uh, say hello and hi to our Bulsu ones. Okay, so if you're there, please uh, wave your hands. Okay, <laughs> even if I'm not seeing you. So I would like to uh, you to know that I'm here for you this afternoon for us to explore some of our discarte for our e classe So thank you very much for the administration of the... Uh, thank you very much for the administration of uh, the uh, Bulacan State University. And I think we are streaming live. We are streaming live to, uh, in Facebook and not only in Malolo City, but of course in uh, Bustos or in the Bustos campus. Okay, so I'm uh, Professor Dr. Michael Joseph S. Dino from Our Lady of Fatima University. Uh, I'm actually the current director of the Research Development of Innovation Center, and our main campus is located, of course, in Valenzuela City. And I'm very happy, okay, so I'm very happy uh, that I'm here with you with this afternoon. Thank you for, for joining with me this afternoon as I share my thoughts about, of course, the different tips and tricks in e classe Okay, so may I know before we start if you're hearing me right? If you're hearing me right? Okay, I'm actually monitoring the Facebook uh, for me to hear if my audio is, uh, is correct. Okay, so I'm very proud to say that I am also uh, a Bulakenyo. Okay, I'm, uh, of course, 100% Bulakenyo. And just uh, recently, last year, I was awarded as one of the Gintong Kabataan. So this is my uh, way of giving back to, to our uh, province, uh, to, uh, to Bulacan. And of course, I'm also a Tubong Bustosenyo. So my parents are from Bustos, Bulacan. And I know my, my mom uh, is uh, watching right now. So I want to say hi to my mom and, of course, to my, uh, 
to my uh, brothers and sisters or actually engage, of course, for us this afternoon. So I'm a researcher. I'm a graduate of nursing, okay? And also I'm a teacher and an innovator. So my love and passion for technology started when I entered Apple somewhere in 2013 through what you call the Apple Distinguished Education um, Educators Program. So these are a group of educators who are using a lot of technologies uh, for integration in the classroom. So for example, sa ating e-klase, so merong uh, sangay ng, ng Apple Incorporated ang namamahala sa mga uh, bagay-bagay na may kinalaman sa edukasyon sa Apple. Okay, at ito yung tinatawag nating Apple Distinguished Educator. So I'm very fortunate kasi naging uh, parte ako ng advisory board ng Apple Distinguished Educator sa Asia and the Pacific. So we are doing lots of great things with Apple. Um, gumagawa kami ng mga e-books. Okay, so gumagawa rin kami ng mga research para makita namin kung ano ba yung epekto, of course, at paano magiging epektibo ang paggamit ng teknolohiya hindi lang sa ating practice but of course doon din sa ating education. So we explore lots of technologies and I know you will uh, meet some of uh, these technologies pagdating ng, uh, ng bagong school year sa uh, Bulacan State University. So we are creating uh, virtual realities. We are creating, uh, of course, the, what you call the, the e-books. So right now, I'm passionate also with what you call humanoid robots. So I'm exploring on the use of humanoid robots in healthcare, especially sa, sa pag-practice ng nursing, and of course, uh, in education as well. And you know what? Since I graduated in uh, 2005 from my bachelor's degree, so I visited a lot of countries. So I talked to a lot of people in, in local and international conferences. And you know what? So I owed everything to education. I came from an average family in Bustos, Bulacan. And I can clearly remember what my parents are always telling me that the, the best legacy that they can give me is, of course, education. I'm very much, of course, uh, thankful to, to my parents, my, my dad, who is a farmer uh, in, uh, in Bulacan, and my mom, who's uh, keeping um, uh, a simple uh, store in, in our home just to send us to school. So guys, Bulsuans, you are very fortunate because you are being supported by your parents. You are also fortunate because Bulacan State University would like to usher you into this new era of educational delivery. Uh, because of the pandemic, this is uh, what we call uh, e-classe. Okay, so I know some of you would be surprised that um, I, I think uh, now I, I'm still um, learning. I'm a lifelong learner. Okay, so I, after I graduated from the University of Santo Tomas, Okay, so several years ago. So I pursue a lot of um, education or professional um, education. Okay, and right now, I was admitted just recently at the Johns Hopkins University as one of the academic scholar for the school year 2020-2021. But because of the pandemic, of course, um, it's very impossible for me to, to have my, my classes in... Uh, in Baltimore, in Maryland, in the US. So we converted into online learning. So what I'm going to share with you guys this, this afternoon are some of my proven and evidence-based tips and tricks on how we can navigate what we call the E-Classe. Because I know for a lot of you, you are surprised of what happened and you are some of you are really bothered on what we're going to do next. Okay, so let me, of course, take this opportunity to share with you some of my uh, tips and tricks on how you can navigate this upcoming school year pagdating natin dun sa tinatawag nating e-klase. So before I start, I want to share with you this very important quotation. And this is what uh, my parents are always telling me every now and then, that education is the passport for a better future. The education is the passport for a better future. And tomorrow belongs to those who prepare it today. In the next few weeks, you are going to embark into a new modality of learning. And we call it the flexible learning uh, modality. And uh, the best way to prepare for it would be now. So 
ngayon na uh, we are waiting for the next school year it's very much uh, uh, advisable that we prepare na yun palang doon sa ating pag-aaral but of course let us first reflect and accept what is happening right now because of these tiny particles that you are seeing on your or on your screen uh, every aspect of the industry is experiencing dramatical shifts in its practice including education and based from the uh, data that were captured by uh, of course the Johns Hopkins University one of the leading university as far as covid-19 uh, surveillance and covid-19 monitoring is concerned in the philippines the numbers the number of cases are gradually increasing so in the in the next school year so it is very much expected that we will not meet because safety first so we need to uh, of course, prioritize safety among among other things. So we expect that we're going to meet virtually, just like what you are seeing on your screen. So, for example, last summer I have managed to teach a lot of students uh, virtually, okay, uh, in Our Lady of Fatima University. And uh, this is our assurance for you guys that virtual learning can also be equally enjoying and fulfilling as possible. Okay, so as I can see here, we have 1.2, uh, 1.2, okay, so 1,200 viewers at Facebook. So at this point, I would like everyone to be active. Okay, so I would like everyone to be active. So I'm going to share now a QR code in your screen. Okay, I'm going to share now a QR code in your screen. So if you have smartphones, additional smartphones that you can use, you can, uh, you can uh, direct your camera on the QR code and visit the website. But of course, for those of you who are using their own uh, smartphones or using their own laptops, you can visit the site www.menti.com slash and input the following 2S4PHOSQHF. So if you will be instructed to input a digital code, please input 2539359. So for those of you who are, who are watching, you can take a picture of this. And for those of you who are watching on their mobile phones, you can take a screenshot of this. So when you visit that particular website, so I want you to input, I want to know your polls. I want to know what are your thoughts. Okay, so you're going to answer this particular question. What are the qualities of a good student in online learning? Again, so what are the qualities of a good student in online learning? So you're going to input three words or qualities that you think are the qualities of a good student in online flexible learning. And later this afternoon, before we end our discussion, I'm going to share with you what you have responded. Okay, so I want you to be active all throughout, of course, uh, the, uh, the, the presentation. Okay. So, you know what? I'm a social networking site addict, just like you guys. I love Facebook. I love YouTube. I love Instagram. And uh, yesterday, when I was reflecting on what I'm going to share with you this afternoon, so it came, um, I came across this particular posting from a daughter of an, a teacher. Okay. So, and it says here, to students starting school today, Please be nice to your teachers. My dad is 53 years old and not a whiz with technology. He's, he called me every day attempting to practice because he's so nervous and, and wants what's best for his students. Please be patient with them and they are trying. So guys, I would like you to know that not only you students are having some sort of um, a running stomach as far as what you call blended learning is concerned. But you're very fortunate that Bulacan State University is doing its best in collaboration with both public and private uh, institutions to give you the best possible. But please, guys, you are now certified netizens. And even during the start of the semester, you are all netizens. So please uh, behave accordingly. Okay? So dapat walang nagtotroll. Especially kapag may mga live streaming, dapat walang nagko-comment ng negative. Bawal ang nega ngayon sa so dapat lahat positive mindset tayo. Kasi lahat tayo ay nag adjust at lahat tayo ay nag hope na someday. So magkaroon, bumalik na yung tinatawag nating normal 
At ngayon, ay, um, ang ating um, task or responsibilidad is to embrace what we call the new normal. So just like you guys, I'm a student. So just like you, I'm a student. I'm a student for more than 20 years of my life. And as a student, whenever I teach in my class, I always put my, my shoes. No, I always put myself on the shoes of my students. And isa dun sa mga questions na lagi kong tinatanong, ano ba yung magandang flexible learning? So paano ba natin masasabi na maganda ang flexible learning? So for example, uh, it's because of our teachers who are uh, painstakingly uh, doing, of course, our modules for us for this coming school year. And um, I think one of the most important quotations that I can share with you would be, the best teachers make you fall in love with the course. Is that correct? Yes. So the best teachers make you fall in love with the course. But for me, as a teacher, I also do believe that uh, the success of, uh, of a student in an online learning modality or e-class is also dependent on the student themselves. No? So depende rin po yan dun sa mga estudyante. Hindi, for example, magaling ang teacher ay magiging magaling na rin ang estudyante. So maaring mataas ang chance niyang maging magaling, pero meron pa rin tayong tinatawag na student factor. So ang success natin dito, no? So ang ang success natin dito sa sa ating e-klase ay hindi lamang nakadepende sa Bulacan State University. But of course, nakadepende rin dito dun sa ating uh, personal na mindset pagdating dito sa e-klase. Kaya hopefully guys, so after we have this particular webinar, later mag-post kayo sa Facebook and I'm going to search for your posting. Please use the hashtags nagmahal, minahal, at nag-aral. Okay, so lahat ng mga, uh, mga teachers, mga guro, so in every university, so lahat kami ay nag-aasam na dapat kayo ay nagmahal, minahal, at of course kayo ay mag-aaral din. Okay, so let's talk about 2020. So ang dami nang nangyari nitong 2020. No? So sabi nga nila, so January pa lang, ang dami nang, of course, changes na nangyari doon sa paligid natin. Pero of course, yung mga pangyayaring ito ay may mga bagay na hindi tayo kontrolado Kaya nga sinasabi natin that if you cannot change the direction of the wind, please adjust your, sa your sails. Okay, so for example, sa pakikipagkapwa natin sa ibang tao, sa ating mga classmates, sa ating mga guro, minsan nagkakaroon tayo ng tinatawag nating mga conflict, may it be in online or in-person classes. So sometimes, nagkakaroon tayo ng mga conflict. Pero ang uh, isang batayan ng isang estudyante na matured, Okay, at malawak ang pangunawa would be uh, kung hindi ko man mababago ang uh, behavior ng ibang tao, so pwede ko rin baguhin ang aking sarili. At iyan ang main thought na I want everyone to embrace this afternoon. At jaan umiikot ang, at, ang iikot ang ating discussion ngayong afternoon na ito. So gusto kong i-embrace nyo ang lapit, lipat, at lapat. Okay, so una, Ilapit natin ang edukasyon gamit ang teknolo teknolohiya. Or sa English, ito yung tinatawag nating electronic. So dahil uh, meron tayong teknolohiya sa mga panahon na to ang internet, ang World Wide Web, so pwede nating dalin or ilapit ang edukasyon sa ating mga estudyante, uh, even this time of the pandemic. Ikalawa, kailangan nating ilipat ang classroom sa ating bahay. Okay, so meaning, yung physical classroom na dating inaatenan natin, hindi na tayo pupunta doon ngayon kasi meron tayo, of course, quarantine. So kailangan nating uh, subjectively ilipat ang classroom sa ating mga bahay. So ang ating classroom ngayon ay, at, ay ating mga bahay o ang ating klase. At of course, kailangan nating ilapat ang ating pananaw sa pag-aaral ngayong panahon ng pandemya. Ito yung tinatawag nating diskarte. Okay, kailangan nating ilapat ang ating pananaw sa pag-aaral ngayong panahon ng pandemya. Lapit, lipat, at lapat. So pag sinabi nating diskarte sa e-klase, so ito yung mga katanungan na gusto nating mabatid um, hanggang tayo ay matapos sa ating diskusyon ngayong uh, afternoon. So, ang first topic natin, ano ang e-klase? So, papakita ko sa inyo kung ano ba yung mga pwede nating ma-expect sa e-klase. So, for, for the past, no? So, for the past several years pre-COVID, 
So I'm uh, teaching online kahit wala pang COVID. So I'm going to give you a taste on what uh, is e-klase. And paano nga bang e-klase? At ano ba yung dapat na pananaw natin sa e-klase? Especially yung mga tips and tricks para sa ating mga estudyante para maging epektibo yung ating pag-aaral doon sa ating e-klase. So kapag sinabi nating diskarte, okay, kapag naririnig ko yung word na diskarte, I always remember my barkada, no? In uh, Bustos, yung mga barkada ko sa Bulacan. Kasi laging kapag meron kaming mga issues and problem, so laging kaming may mga diskarte. So guys, kapag sinabi nating diskarte, sa English, ang tawag natin dito ay strategy or technique. No? Ito ay related din sa technique. At uh, dun sa, for example, for some of you who are playing basketball, okay, so ang tawag natin din, din dito ay game plan. So dapat, before ka mag-start ng e-klase, meron kang diskarte. Dapat meron kang game plan. Dapat meron kang strategy. At dapat meron ka ding technique. Okay. So sabi nga nila, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. So ang first topic natin is about ano nga ba ang e-klase? Okay. So kung dati kayo ay nasa loob ng inyong mga ng inyong uh, university, no? Sa sa buong maghapon, so hindi na of course mangyayari 'yan kasi meron tayong quarantine. For example, sa isang subject na tinitake nyo or sa isang course na tinitake nyo sa kolehiyo, Okay, for example, iyan ay 3 hours ang meeting nyo per week. So ano ba yung paapo posibleng mangyari? So dito sa e-klase, meron tayong tinatawag na flexible learning. So meaning, kung dati 3 hours yung meet-up nyo sa klase, maaring hindi ganun kahaba ang magiging meet-up nyo ngayong time ng pandemic sa flexible learning. Okay, kasi of course, marami tayong consideration na i-discuss natin mamaya. Ano ba ang data requirements, no? Diba? Yung internet requirements for that. Kasi kapag 3 hours kayo nag-klase, okay, just like what you are doing uh, before, maubos ang data. Considering that the Philippines is a third world country or a developing country, so we have challenges in terms of our internet connection. So you take a look at this particular uh, diagram. So kayo ay matatawag kong front learner. Kung meron tayong frontliner, ang ating mga nurse, ang doktor, ang ating guard, at ang ating mga empleyado na nagsaserve pa rin dito sa time ng pandemya, ang tawag natin sa kanila ay frontliner. So ang tawag ko naman sa inyong mga students ay front learners. Kasi kayo yung mga nag-aaral ngayong time ng pandemya. So kung makikita nyo yung, ano, yung circle, so you take a look at this as a pie. And for me, according to research no, na na-review po natin, ang effective na flexible learning ay usually two-thirds independent learning. So meaning, gamit ang mga resources o mga modules na ibibigay sa inyo ng inyong university, so pag-aaralan nyo siya on your own. And one-third, so magkakaroon tayo ng tinatawag nating mga live synchronous ses session such as this one. Diba? Na meaning, Uh, parehas tayong magla-login, maaring iyan ay sa Google Meet, Google Hangouts, maaring iyan ay sa Facebook uh, groups, maaring iyan ay sa Zoom, maaring iyan ay sa webinar, etc. So yun ang mag-comprise uh, ng one-third nung, uh, nung as asignatura nyo. Okay, so meaning, iha-highlight ng mga professor yung mga bagay na dapat nyo malaman base doon sa mga bagay na inalam nyo na. Uh, doon sa mga modules at re learning resources na kanilang ipin-repair at ibibigay sa inyo online. So ang konsepto ng flexible learning ay, ma ay uh, maaari nating halintulad doon sa konsepto din ng tinatawag nating flip learning. Kasi yung flip learning, sa flip learning, ang ginagawa nito, yung mga estudyante, nagbabasa muna sila before sila pumasok ng klase. Para pagdating nila sa klase, meron na silang kaalaman about doon sa konsepto at iyon ay lilinangin na lang ng kanilang mga teachers or mga professors. So, ang flexible learning naman, ipoprovide sa atin yung mga resources, learning resources, ang module, okay? Maaring magbigay sila ng mga links or videos, okay? At pag-aaralan natin yun. At kapag napag-aaralan natin yun, magsaset ng schedule ang ating mga professor dun sa tinatawag nating synchronous learning or live learning, live classes or e-classes. So, nagkakaroon tayo doon yung tinatawag nating instructor presence. So, ito yung isang uh, paraan ng pagtingin din doon sa chart na yan. 
So 80% you're going to learn on your own or two-thirds you're going to learn on your own gamit ang inyong Google Classroom. Okay, in, in other universities such as in our university, we are using Canvas. So meron din kayong access sa Google for Education. Okay, later, i-discuss natin yan. At of course, gamit ang mga social networking site at ang mga video uh, video web webinar applications. So pwede magkaroon ng klase sa inyong mga courses or subjects. Okay, so I'm very happy to, to inform you that uh, this web webinar series is very much fruitful, especially for you students. Kasi yung next na webinar natin is all about yung paggamit ng Google Classroom. Kasi I think majority of your teachers will be using Google Classroom. So paano ba tayo mag-log in sa Google Classroom? So mabilis lang. Kung sa online selling, meron tayong tinatawag na PM is the key or personal message is the key. Pagdating natin sa flexible learning, gamit ang Google Classroom, your Gmail account is the key. Okay, so for example, you need to log into your Gmail. So di ba kayo, meron kayong mga email, meron kayong Yahoo Mail, meron kayong Gmail. So sa paggamit ng Google Classroom, kailangan yung inyong Gmail accounts. So kapag nag-log in na kayo dun sa inyong Gmail accounts, so pipindutin nyo yung waffle button na located dun sa upper right corner of the screen. Okay, so ang tawag natin dyan ay waffle button kasi mukha siyang waffle. So ito yung nine dots that you can um, notice beside your, your picture at the upper right portion of your screen. So when you click that waffle button, so magkakaroon ng drop-down list at nandiyan yung mga resources na pwede nyo gamitin. So don't worry kung wala kayong Microsoft Word, don't worry kung wala kayong Excel, don't worry kung wala kayong PowerPoint, uh, PowerPoint kasi dyan meron na tayong tinatawag na Google Docs, meron tayong ginagamit tinatawag na Google Sheet at meron din tayong pwedeng gamitin sa ating PowerPoint. Pero of course, yung main uh, page na pagkukuha na natin ng mga resources na pinipare ng ating mga professors would be yung tinatawag nating Google Classroom at makikita nyo siya doon sa Google Waffle. Okay, pag-click nyo doon, so i-click nyo na of course yung uh, application icon ng Google Classroom. So when you click that uh, Google Classroom, so ganito yung magiging itsura niya. Diba? So sa bawat subject na kayo ay naka-enroll, so makakita kayo ng, ng separate boxes. At you're going, when you uh, click on that, so makikita nyo doon yung inyong mga resources. So dito iikot yung tinatawag nating uh, asynchronous learning. So pag sinabi natin asynchronous learning, very exciting to kasi you can study your lessons uh, using your own schedules, using your preferences, right? Kasi yung resources na handyan na yan at i-access nyo lang siya. Na-prepared na siya beforehand ng inyong mga professors. So ang tawag natin dyan ay asynchronous learning. So hindi sabay. Kasi you can access Google Classroom anytime. So meron din naman tayong tinatawag na synchronous session. So sa pagkakaroon ng synchronous session, nagkakaroon tayo ng live e-klase. At dyan, pwede natin gamitin ang Google Hangouts, pwede natin gamitin ang Messenger Room ng Facebook, at pwede natin, natin gamitin ang Zoom application, just like what we are doing right now. So, ang ginagamit natin ngayon ay Zoom. So, by using Zoom, you, your professor can teach you or highlight the most important part of the lesson and you can ask live sa inyong mga instructors or sa inyong mga professors. So yan, so mamimit nyo dyan yung mga, yung mga kaklase nyo at mamimit nyo din dyan yung inyong professor. Okay, at you can ask questions, your professor can discuss something, okay? At tutulungan tayo na ating professor para mas malaman ng ating asignatura or mga topics na covered natin for that particular week. So syempre, since gumagamit tayo ng teknolohiya, you know what? Ang isang responsabling ano, no, estudyante sa e-klase ay talaga namang masasabi nating nag -e embrace ng tinatawag nating online netiquette. So pag sinabi nating netiquette, ito ay combination ng internet at etiquette. Di ba, for example, kapag nasa pampublikong lugar tayo, where, where, when we are in a public places, in in public places, so meron tayong tinatawag na netiquette, na etiquette. So in virtual spaces, for example, in e-klase, meron naman tayong tinatawag na online netiquette. So for example, nag-schedule ng synchronous sessions ang inyong mga teacher dapat kailangan nandoon na kayo sa room 5 minutes before the designated start of the session. Kailangan ang inyong attire ay maayos, hindi naman 
uh, of course, necessary na kayo ay mag-uniform, uh, but dapat maayos yung inyong pananamit. Dapat meron siyang, of course, uh, uh, meron siyang manggas. Okay? So, dapat hindi tayo gagamit ng mga, of course, ay yung mga spaghetti straps, yung distress shirts. No? So, dapat maayos yung ating feed. At yung microphone, i-on lang natin siya kapag tayo ay binigyan ng permission na magsalita. Another thing would be for, for speaking. You can raise your hand. Um, you, you can only share your screen okay, when you are instructed to. And of course, dun sa chat rooms, katulad ng nahandito ngayon sa Facebook, meron tayong live chats. So dapat tayo din ay maging responsable. Okay, so dapat tayo ay maging responsable. Kasi yung ating uh, mga bagay na sinasabi dyan, it will reflect our values as a person. And you know what? Marami na akong na-meet na different... Uh, 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 people all around the world, masasabi ko na ang mga bulakenyo isa yan sa mga masasabi natin very respectful sa ibang mga tao. Okay. So at this point, alamin natin. So ano ba yung pwede natin maging diskarte? So before tayo dumiskarte, alamin muna natin kung ano ang difference ng traditional class at ang E-class. Kasi di ba ganyan yan? For example, if you are courting someone Okay, kung naliligaw kayo guys, di ba? So for example, kung naliligaw kayo, kailangan alamin nyo muna yung, uh, yung liligawan nyo, kung ano bang favorite uh, flowers niya, ano bang favorite chocolates niya. So ganun din. So para before tayo gumawa ng diskarte sa ating e-klase, kailangan nating alamin ang pagkakaiba ng on-campus and off-campus learning. Okay, so ito yung mga positive and negative side ng off-campus ng off learning, yung e-classes or flexible learning. So, dahil na yung pandemic, so syempre, mag-stay tayo sa ating mga bahay at doon tayo mag-aaral. So, masasabi natin that this is a junction between freedom and challenge. Totoo yun. So, for example, dahil tayo ay nasa bahay, nasa atin ang kalayaan. Okay. Dahil tayo ay nasa bahay, we have the freedom to do what we want. Correct. Right. And of course, we are also free of commuting every day. I know some of our students from Bulacan State University, nagko-commute kayo ng mga 30 minutes, nagko-commute kayo ng, ng one hour. Okay, so ngayon hindi na kayo magko-commute kasi you are at your own home. You have uh, the freedom, no? Free na, free na yung daily commute nyo. Okay, at yung, um, yung inyong allowance for the daily commute, pwede nyo yung ilagay dun sa inyong mga data plans. And meron din kayong freedom to do what you want. Right? Kasi... Wala naman dyan yung teacher, wala naman kayo sa classroom. Pero meron din tayo mga challenge. Bakit? Kasi kapag kayo ay nasa bahay, maaari natin masabi that there are some sort of distractions in your own homes. Right? So you have your mom and dad crossing every now and then. Okay, you have your 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 little brother crying, etc. You have your kapitbahay singing karaoke. So there are lots of distractions at home. And kapag nasa bahay kayo, wala na kayong transition from home to school. Kasi before, for example, if you are doing commute, nagko-commute kayo from your homes to school, para sa akin kasi, for example, now I'm residing in Quezon City, so papunta ko ng work sa Fatima in Valenzuela, yung, yung, uh, yung travel ko from, from my pad to, to my office, yun yung masasabi kong transition phase for me from my, from my, ano, from my uh, home to my workplace. Diba? So yun yung transition from my home to workplace. Pero ngayon wala nang transition. Kasi gigising ka sa bahay ka. Tapos of course, uh, you are going to to learn your lessons within your home and kailangan yung matend ng mga, ng mga synchronous classes nasa bahay din po kayo. So ano yung pwede natin gawin dun sa mga challenges na yan sa distraction at yung uh, pagkakaroon ng walang tra transition. Okay. So uh, let's take a look at this one. So For our students, we need to uh, consider the value of setting boundary. Okay, kailangan meron tayong mga boundaries na iseset kapag tayo ay nasa e-klase. Kasi if we are setting boundaries, okay, so it will increase our productivity. So it will avoid too much freedom na yung gusto natin gawin, gagawin natin. And of course, ang pinaka-importante, it will test our patience, ang pagiging pasensyosa natin at ang ating pagiging responsabling estudyante. Diba sabi nga nila, yung mga tao daw na of course na responsable, kahit hindi nakikita ng ibang tao, gagawin nila yung tama. Okay, so by, uh, by setting boundaries, it will test your patience and of course, yung inyong pagiging responsable. So this is my advice for you guys. You need to set boundaries for three different spaces. And these are the three spaces. 
kailangan sa bahay, meron kang tinatawag na lugar para ikaw ay mag-aral. Or yung tinatawag nating study space. So, kapag nasa bahay ka din, kailangan meron ka rin me space. Yan, this is the me space. For example, ang inyong kwarto or ang inyong sala. At kailangan meron ka ding family space. At dapat, alam mo yung boundary ng mga spaces na yon. Okay, dapat meron kang isang definite na area na kung saan ikaw ay mag-aaral. Ang tawag doon ay study space. So, merong uh, lugar sa inyong bahay na kung saan ikaw ay gagawa ng uh, mga recreational activities. Pwede rin yan. Kung uh, very limited ang space sa bahay nyo, pwede rin naman natin gawin yan. And of course, dapat meron kang lugar sa bahay where in you're going to interact with your family. Pero if this is not possible, I think the best would be you you think of uh, uh, an imaginary line that divide your study space, your me space, and yung tinatawag nating family space. Okay, so let's talk about your study space. Kasi yung lugar na kung saan kayo ay mag-aaral, it will uh, give a lot of positive impact on the quality that you will be absorbing for your e-classes. Okay, so I would suggest that your study space would be uh, not near your your front door. Mas maganda kung sa, sa room siya. Kailangan niya na soundproof. O kung hindi naman pwede, kasi very limited lang space sa bahay, pwede kayong maglagay ng mga uh, mga earphones or earplugs, etc. Okay? So, kailangan hindi yan sa traffic area. For example, kitchen or living room. And, it's not pa it, and if this is not possible, kasi, for example, very limited ang space sa inyong mga pad, Okay, imagine a visual divider that will divide your study space from other spaces. Okay, so for example, right now, I'm I'm living in a limited space, in a one-bedroom pad. So, meron ako tinatawag na, of course, imaginary line or imaginary divider dun sa personal space, dun sa aking me space, and of course, dun din sa tinatawag nating uh, family space or yung, yung resting area din. Okay, so for me, I would not suggest for you, no? So, I would not suggest for you to study dun sa inyong kama or kwarto. Because according to studies, magkakaroon kayo ng mga sleep issues. Okay? Kasi there's no uh, demarcation between the area where you are uh, sleeping and the area where, where you are studying. Okay? So, might as well, kapag nag nagkaroon ng live synchronous sessions, okay, baka mamaya makatulog kayo. Kasi that particular space is also used for sleeping. Another thing, so it's not recommended to have your study space in your sala. Kasi according to research, magkakaroon kayo ng problema. Okay, so magkakaroon kayo ng problema in terms of your posture. So dapat meron kayong uh, space na talaga doon kayo mag-study. For example, you have your table, you have your comfortable chair, etc. Okay, so let us take a look now at some of the distractions. Ang distraction sa bahay kapag ikaw ay nag-aral would be yung tinatawag natin mga visual or auditory distraction. Visual, habang nag-aaral ka, madaming lumalakad. At habang nag-aaral ka, marami kang naririnig. For example, busina. Okay? So, these are some of the distractions na uh, kailangan alam natin kung paano natin sila maiiwasan. So, ang study space natin ay parang similar to this one. So, again, so it doesn't um, necessarily mean na dapat malaking space mo sa bahay. No. So, you can have that imaginary line in your, your area. Kasi parang toddler. Ang toddler, so meron tayong tinatawag na value of repetition. So kung dito siya kumakain, dapat dito lang siya lagi kumakain. So dapat parang ganun din tayo in terms of study. Kasi kapag nandun tayo sa specific area na yon it means learning. Okay. So these are some of the requirements. no Kailangan meron kang calendar. So dapat you have a space for your material. Kung meron kang cabinet, maganda yan. Pero kung wala, katulad ko, ilalagay ko lang yung aking mga uh, of course, uh, mga books dito sa aking sa tabi ng aking uh, learning space. Dapat meron kang light. Dapat meron kang light. Okay, again, baka mamaya bumili pa kayo ng ano, bumili pa kayo ng ring light, no? So hindi naman kasama sa grades nyo ang, ang pagmumukhang fresh, no? Yung freshness natin, hindi yan kasama dun sa grades natin. So so yung usual light nyo sa bahay, so okay na po siya. So kailangan meron din kayong clock. O for me, ang ginagamit ko is the, the desk clock. Okay, so for those of you na walang, for example, calendar, ako gumagamit ako ng tinatawag kong notes. So itong notes na to, lagi ko itong katabi, uh, not only for when teaching, but of course, dun sa pag-aaral ko kapag may mga synchronous session kami, for example, in Johns Hopkins. So kailangan meron akong laging mga notes. So yun yung nagre-replace ng aking calendar. At yung light, dapat 
uh, malinaw, no? Mali, maliwanag yung light. Kasi baka magkaroon kayo ng, ng uh, problema dun sa, of course, sa inyong site. So I'm a nurse, so uh, I know this. So wag nyo, of course, i- uh, sa sacrifice ang inyong health dun sa sa ano no dun sa, for example dim light etc. Okay, so I'm going to share with you my my learning space. So this is my learning space. So as you can see here, so laging may water bottle kapag nagutom ako, kuha lang ako ng uh, ng cereal or chichirya diyan. So lagi ako may ball pen, tapos meron na akong of course notebook. So may time dun sa laptop ko. Tapos of course I have my coffee or tea there. Yan. So, yun yung aking learning space. So, mapapansin nyo, meron din akong elevation. Okay? So, yun. Kasi I'm very much comfortable in learning and teaching, of course, using this particular space. So, yan yung aking learning space. Okay? So, yan yung isa sa mga tips. Kailangan, you need to uh, have an uh, imaginary line on your learning spaces. Okay? So, tama. Sabi nga nung isang nag-comment. Okay? So, distraction kapag malapit sa, sa higaan. Because according to research, mag, pwede kayo magkaroon ng mga sleep problems. So, kung walang space, so again, kung limited ang space, katulad nito, very limited ang space ko, so meron lang ako imaginary line on my study space. So, paano ba tayo maghanda? No? So, ngayon, na, na-consider na natin yung ating learning space. So, paano tayo maghanda para sa ating e-klase? So, ito yung mga da- bagay na dapat nating alamin. Okay, so ito yung tinatawag kong no principles. So kailangan kilala mo yung sarili mo. Alam mo yung yung weaknesses mo, alam mo of course yung iyong strength as a student kasi gagamitin mo siya, okay? Para ma-maximize mo yung iyong uh, learning. So kilalanin din ang mga kurso na ititake mo, ano ba yung mga requirements diyan? Ano ba yung ina-expect mo? 'Di ba mas maganda kung expected natin kung ano yung pwede nating mangyari for that specific class. So, kilalanin ang kurso at kilalanin din natin ang proseso. Ano ba yung mga rules and regulations that are being set by our teachers or instructors pagdating sa e-klase? Okay? At of course, kailangan kilalanin din natin ang ating mga kagamitan. Kailangan kilalanin natin kung ano yung uh, gamit natin sa e-klase. So, hindi porket, for example, e-classes to kailangan you have the top of the line gadgets. No. So, even... A simple smartphones can be used for e-klase. Okay, so let's take a look dun sa first. And that would be know your requirements. Ano ba ang kagamitan? Ano ba ang mga resources na maaari kong gamitin kapag ako ay nag e klase So pag sinabi natin e-klase, electronic yan, kailangan yung kumunek gamit ang internet. Although I know for sure that uh, in some of the courses, in some universities, they offering yung tinatawag nating learning packets doon sa mga area na walang internet. Minsan, so meron silang printed material na i-deliver per, per week or per two weeks or per month doon sa estudyante. Ang tawag natin doon ay learning packets. But since ang topic natin ngayon ay e-klase, we're talking about electronic. no? So we're talking about e-learning. So gamit ang internet at gamit ang World Wide Web. Okay, unang-unang tanong. I know some of the students natin very technical. So, ano ba mga technical requirements doon sa device na gagamitin natin? So, ito, so meron tayong tinatawag na technical requirements and learnical requirements. Okay, kailangan, ang operating system mo ay Windows XP or pataas. Kapag ikaw ay gumagamit ng laptop, ikaw gumagamit ng iMac, dapat OS X 10. Or if Linux, kailangan Chrome OS. So, again, ang laptop, hindi yan requirement. Okay, kasi kung wala kang laptop, pwede ka mag-mobile. Kung gumagamit ka ng, for example, ng iPhone, iOS 5 pataas kasi yung mga applications, for example, sa Google, so compatible na dyan, and Android 2.3. Okay, computer speed and processor, may it be mobile operating system, 1, G- 1 GB of RAM, okay, gigabyte of RAM, or random access memory sa ating mga estudyante from the uh, technology departments. Okay, and I would suggest 2 GHz processor. So usually yung mga uh, gadgets natin sa market, uh, minimum meron silang 1.8. Pero for 1.8, mag-work din yung some of the applications. For example, Google Classroom, mag-work din siya sa 1.8. Pero for me, I would suggest mga 2 GHz processor. And ang internet speed natin, kung tayo ay nakadata, so dapat minimum of 512. Okay. So guys, I think you you will be uh, thinking, ah, aba, baka mamaya mahal yan. No. We did a research and we actually compiled a list of devices that that students can use and the lowest would be smartphone would be around 2,000 pesos. Smartphone na yun, ha? 
smartphone na siya that you can use and i think this is a uh, cherry no uh, cherry mobile smartphone siya and we also tested it effective naman siya okay and of course as a student kailangan mo ng document processing software kasi meron kang mga course tasks na ipapasa pero don't worry again kasi sa Google just like what i mentioned before meron kayong free Google Docs that is a replacement of your Microsoft Word okay meron din kayong Google Sheet na replacement for your Microsoft Excel and kailangan ng competence sa pagpasa ng inyong course output kailangan sanay tayo mag-email kailangan sanay tayo mag-communicate kailangan ng ating commitment no so dahil nasa bahay tayo no hindi pwedeng kung kailan lang natin gustong mag-aral okay kailangan natin ng commitment dapat for each day meron tayong predefined schedule na kailangan nating sundin kailangan online tayo sa mga synchronous sessions at kailangan on time Communication, you need to communicate with your friends. You need to communicate with your professors. Okay? And kailangan may sense of concern ka sa iyong sarili at sa iyong, sa iyong family. Because your family is sending you to school, supporting your study, even if you are at home. So kailangan i-maximize at pahalagahan natin yung opportunity na yan. Kasi hindi lahat ng estudyante ay nabibigyan ng opportunity na mag-aral. Okay? So ito na yung mga device requirements. Tingnan naman natin. Ano ba yung mga activities na pwede nating ma-encounter kapag tayo ay nag e -klase? So, hinati ko ito sa tatlo. Okay, so sa mga technology students natin dyan, okay, shout out. Okay, ito yung mga activities na pwede nating gawin sa e-klase or online learning. No? So, at hinati ko siya sa tatlo. Yung unang grupo, ito yung mga activities na kakain ng very low data. So, for example, pag-chat, instant messaging with professors or pag-email without attachment at yung uh, konsumo niyan sa data ay 1 to 200 MB per hour. Pero per siyempre, depende pa rin doon sa attachment. Okay, kung ikaw ay nagbabrowse, no? kapag ikaw ay nagbabrowse ng mga learning resources sa internet, for example, Google Classroom o kaya uh, nagche-check ka ng mga open resources, mga e-books sa uh, sa internet, so ang average na consumption niyan ng data ay between 200 to 500 MB per hour. Okay, at yung huling grupo, ito yung grupo ng activities na mag i up ng karamihan sa inyong mga data. At ito yung mga synchronous conference, yung Google Meet, Google Hangout, Zoom, okay, yung panonood ng mga video lectures na 480p o kaya 1080p, yung mga HD na, no? Okay, so it will eat up around 500 to 3,000 MB per hour of your data. Okay, so ang question ngayon, ga gaanong data ang kailangan natin? Okay, kapag tayo ay nasa e-klase. So don't worry, kasi we, I summarize it already. So ito yung table na nagpapakita kung ano ang pwede natin gawin sa so 1GB, 2GB, 3GB, 4GB, at 5GB. So this was produced by my team at the Research Development and Innovation Center uh, in our university. At I want you to focus your attention doon sa loob ng red square. Okay, so kasi ito yung mga activities na kakain ng karamihan sa ating mga data. So therefore, ito yung mga bagay na kailangan natin consider na, oy kapag ginawa ko to pwedeng ma-eat up yung aking mga data. Okay, so tingnan natin, magbigay tayo ng isang senaryo. For example, ikaw ay estudyante na naka-enroll sa isang 3-unit subject. Ano yung common activity mo? So, syempre, nandiyan ang synchronous, okay, sorry for the spelling, synchronous lectures. So, for example, in our university, we have 90 minutes, uh, maximum 1.5 hours lang. no? Okay? So, that will consume 750 MB ng data. Kapag nagbabrowse ka ng internet, gumagawa ka ng yung mga assignments. So, it will, uh, for example, for 60 minutes or 1 hour, it will consume around 250 MB of data at an average. And kung ikaw ay nanonood ng mga video sa YouTube, mga tinatawag natin mga edu videos sa YouTube, so for 30 minutes or 0.5 hours, so it will consume around 250 MB. So kung ikaw ay estudyante, naka-enroll ng 3-unit course, per week ang kailangan mo ay 1.25 uh, GB. Okay, kung ikaw ay naka-enroll sa 6 units, 2.5 GB. Kung ikaw ay naka-enroll sa 9 units, 3.75 GB. O, tingnan natin. Sige. Kung ikaw ay naka-enroll sa 9 units, how much per month na data ang kailangan mo? You need 15 GB of data at an average. You need 15 GB of data at an average. So, magkano yun per month? 
Okay, so if you're going to take a look at yung mga yung mga plans in Globe and Smart, okay, so this this will only cost you around 200 to 500 pesos per month. Per month na yun. Okay, if you are enrolled in a nine unit course kasi yung mga plans nila nag-start sa 30 GB for one month. So double double na, di ba? So 15 times 2 is 30. So okay na yon. Na tingnan niyo yung mga plans ng Globe and Smart. So it ranges from 200 to to 500 pesos. So please take a look at kung ano yung mag-fit doon sa inyong uh, needs. So 15 GB ang kailangan if you are enrolled in a nine units course just to make sure. And of course, yung speed ng internet, that's very important. Because you also consider that there are some areas na mahina ang internet. So paano natin malalaman kung pwede tayong umaten seamlessly ng mga synchronous sessions? So you visit speedtest.net. Okay, then after that, you click on go, just like what you are looking at your screen. So para sa estudyante, ang requirement namin ay at least 5 Mbps download speed. And kapag educators, that is 10 Mbps uh, download uh, speed kasi kami yung nag-host no? ng, ng ating mga synchronous sessions. Pero kung ikaw ay sudyante at atin ka ng mga synchronous sessions, so kailangan ikaw ay merong minimum na 5 Mbps. Okay, tingnan nga natin dito sa aking resulta. Ngayon na tines ko ang aking speed. Okay, so ang resulta ay 19.95 download, 19.95 uh, Mbps download speed. So ang requirements sa educators ay 10. So that's good. And for the students, ang requirement is only 5 Mbps. Okay. So guys, I have, uh, of course, advices din sa inyo kung kayo ay magkakaroon ng Zoom sessions. Okay. So pwede rin tayong magtipid ng mga data kapag gagamit tayo ng Zoom sessions. And at this point, I would like to share with you the video that I created for my university. And I think this is also applicable for you if you will be using the same technology. So please watch this. Dito sa ating virtual classroom kasi sometimes we can we can change the background or we can change our background no so for example if you want to be on the outer space if you want to of course showcase the the building of, of your school or kaya naman of course the, the brand name of, of your university possible naman po yun. but if you are saving your data so it is very much recommended that you turn off your background and of course kung hindi kailangan pwede rin natin i-turn off yung ating audio and video because it will provide some sort of distraction. Okay? So sa online, marami tayong technologies na pwedeng gamitin pero lagi nating tatandaan na not all cool are effective. Hindi dahil porket, of course, cool siya. So, lagi nating sinasabi, sana all, etc. Ganyan. Pero not all cool are, of course, effective. Okay? Next thing. Kailangan, kilalanin natin ang ating sarili. Right? So you know, you should know, of course, kung ano ba yung effective na, ano ba yung uh, effective practices para sa sa'yo. Nung ikaw ay um, nasa pre-COVID scenario pa, so ano ba yung mga, yung mga strategies na nag-work sa'yo? At you need to consider that kasi maaring ito din ay pwedeng maging effective dun sa inyong uh, i-klase. So of course, you need to know your yourself and some of your characteristics. Patient ka ba? Okay? 
Ikaw ba ay, uh, of course, matured enough for the online learning? Ano ba yung learning preferences? Ikaw ba ay mas natututo kung ikaw ay uh, nakikinig sa yung professor or ikaw ay, for example, na nanonood ng mga video? Kilalani mo ang sarili mo? Okay, and of course, uh, sa online learning, so sinong nagsasabi na hindi tayo pwede makipag-collaborate with, with your uh, classmates? So possible din yan. With the use of the social networking site, I think you need to collaborate with your classmates also. No? You need to collaborate with your classmates. Kasi sabi nga nila, no man is an island. And kahit tayo are separated by this, this kind of the pandemic, so kailangan pa rin natin yung mga classmates natin para meron tayong konting breather na tinatawag. So before, alam natin na doon sa barkada natin, sa mga classmates natin, meron, meron tayong talagang classmate na techie person. Right? And we can communicate to that person if we have problems in terms of Google Hangouts, if we have problems in accessing our course modules, etc. So meron din tayong mga classmates na joker. And for me, uh, being friends with, with them also, uh, kahit na online, okay din siya. Kasi it will give us some sort of a light, uh, light moments during, uh, of course, strenuous uh, workload sa klase. And uh, we have classmates na obsessive compulsive, yung mga perfectionists. We need them also to give us advice. And meron din tayo mga klase na talaga namang genius. No? So we also need them. Kasi for example, if there are some topics that we don't understand, okay, if there are some... Uh, explanations of our professors that we would like to make it uh, a little bit uh, uh, easier to understand you can also connect with with your with your your friends okay but don't connect with your friends if you are just copy and pasting the course uh, task na given to you as is as if that is your own okay so if that will happen you are not of course uh, you are you are not uh, lying to to others but First and foremost, you are lying to yourselves. Okay, so for, for those of you who have groups or classmates before, you can create, you can also maintain creation, uh, connection by, by creating yung tinatawag natin mga GCs, group chats, o yung uh, pagkakaroon natin ng Facebook group. Kasi you know what? For several years that I'm teaching in online learning, mas effective ang learning if the students are working in groups. Right? May it be a synchronous session such as this one or may it be a synchronous session kung sila ay nagko-collaborate sa isa't isa so mas effective ang learning. Right? Not only for Filipino students. So this is actually across different nations because I'm also teaching uh, Chinese students. I'm also teaching Chinese students and I found out that if the students are collaborative and cooperative in terms cooperative in terms of their learning as a group mas effective ang learning nila. Okay, so ganun din. So kung medyo techie kayo, for example, meron kayong extra data, so pwede kayong gumamit ng mga online application. So ito yung isa sa mga suggestions ko. If you want to collaborate, mag-brainstorm kayo, so pwede kayong gumamit ng perusal. Okay, kasi ito yung ginagamit uh, para magkaroon ng collaborative reading o collaborative case analysis na pwedeng applicable sa maraming subjects na inyong tinitake. Okay. So next one is you need to understand the courses that you are going to take. Okay, kasi meron mga courses na talaga namang intensive and there are courses also na tinatawag natin conceptual. So mas mabilis, mas mabilis silang ipasa as compared with other courses na talaga namang medyo technical. So consider lang natin na ang learning ay effective kung i-involve natin ang ating sarili. So we always need to be proactive in our learning. Kailangan independent din tayo. Hindi, for example, kung ano lang yung nakita nating resources na binigay ng ating mga professors, ililimit natin yung sarili natin sa pag-aaral doon sa mga resources na yon. So the World Wide Web is, of course, very expanse. So learning is limitless. Kung ang topic nyo, for example, is all about gravity, okay, so don't, only, for example, uh, focus on the resources. Huwag lang kayong mag-rely doon because there are lots of good resources and reliable sources uh, sa internet na pwede niyong uh, gamitin sa inyong further studies. But of course, you need to be proactive. So, there's a Chinese proverb that says, Tell me I might forget, show me I might remember, and involve me I understand. It means we learn 10% of what we read Kung mag read lang tayo, 10% lang yon, 20% of what we hear, 30% of what we see. Kaya nga, videos are very much effective. 
50% of what we see in here, 70% of what we talk about, we'll, we learn 70% of what we talk about, kaya ang chismis, ang bilis mag umikot niyan eh. Okay, we, <laughs> just joking. So 80%, we absorb 80% of what we use and do, and 95% of what we teach. So the most applicable for, our, for us students would be yung 80%. Kailangan, you are actively involved in your learning. So meaning, for example, if there are some course tasks, wag niyo yung papagawa sa iba. So kailangan, ikaw talaga yung gagawa. Because you learn 80% of what you use and do, right? If you need to chat down notes during online lectures ng inyong professor, so you chat down notes because you will retain uh, 30% of what you see or 50% of what you see in, and hear from, from your professor. But of course, at, at the offset, kailangan din naman maging balance ka. Hindi naman yung masyadong, of course, obsessive compulsive pagdating dun sa mga subjects na tinitake mo. Kasi meron tayong tinatawag na prinsipyo ng non-multa sed multum. Okay. Pag sinabi natin non-multa sed multum, not many but much. Or mas padaliin pa natin, quality over quantity. It doesn't matter kung gano'ng kadami yung inaral mo. But of course, kung uh, limited lang ang inaral mo pero good quality naman siya, so effective pa rin siya. Okay, so again, so don't confide yourselves on the resources given by your instructors. You can also do what we call further learning by checking on some animations or videos from, from the internet. Okay, so yun. So, mas maganda kung yung learning na babasa mo, yung learning na kikita mo at napapanood mo, at ang tawag natin dyan ay picture superiority effect. So, when we say picture superiority effect, Learning is effective if several senses are stimulated. Okay? So, research-based yan. So, kaya, of course, you need to involve yourself into the learning process. So, uh, for example, if you want to know more about uh, different tips on how you can navigate the online learning, so I'm maintaining my YouTube channel. Please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. So, my YouTube, YouTube channel uh, page is hashtag Dignified. Okay, so you can see here some of the, my, my main notes, some of the advices that I'm giving uh, co-teachers and of course students as well on how they can save uh, in their learning modes. Okay, so we discussed, of course, yung tinatawag nating picture superiority effect that learning is effective if you stimulate your, your senses. So meron din naman tayong tinatawag na, okay, brace for this. This is what you call the Sharon Conetta effect or the value of repetition. So meaning, you, you learn something if it is being repeated. So for example, if there are some hard subjects or topics in your course, so you make sure that you keep on reviewing your notes or you keep on your reviewing your, your modules. So ang tawag doon ay Sharon Conetta effect. And I know my mom will be happy for this kasi you know what? Sharon Conetta is a very famous song. Hanggang ang himig ko'y maging himig mo na rin. Right? Hanggang ang himig ko'y maging himig mo na rin. So, the value of repetition. Okay. So, if you keep on repeating, learning something, or kaya mahirap na, na subjects, mahirap na topics, if lagi nyo siyang binabrowse, for example, so effective ang learning natin. So, ang tawag natin doon is of course the Sharon Conetta effect. And what else? Effective ang learning kapag yung mga bagay na interested ka, ginagawa mong channel sa pag-aaral. Okay, so for example, uh, I'll be giving you uh, another example. Kailangan active ka lagi. Kasi kung ikaw ay nakaupo lang, okay, at hindi ka gumagalaw, hindi magsisirculate yung uh, yung blood mo doon sa ano, no? Sa, I mean, hindi magiging effective ang circulation ng blood mo doon sa yung head area. So, hindi magiging effective ang learning. Kaya dapat laging meron ka ding exercise. So, for example, you are sitting for, for two hours. Kailangan mag-exercise ka. Stretch mo yung katawan mo. Kailangan maging active ka. Okay? Kasi kapag mas active ka, kapag gumagalaw ka, mas effective yung, yung learning. Kaya nga minsan, di ba, pag nasa loob ng klase, minsan pinag-exercise kayo ng mga professor nyo for stretching for several minutes before you start your class. Because learning is effective if you are proactive. Kaya nga ako, as a teacher, sometimes before we start the synchronous sessions, nagkakaroon kami ng mga uh, mga ano, dancing uh, sessions for one minute. It's like this one. Nag 
nag-exercise kami for one minute be- before we start, okay, mas effective yung response nila sa klase. And another thing, I know some of you are doing TikTok, right? So you know what? I think of uh, a way on how we can use TikTok. ECG. Savage love. Did somebody, did somebody break okay, so your heart? Yung, yung TikTok para turuan yung mga estudyante ko on how to properly place electrodes dun sa chest ng patient in, in the healthcare settings. So yun. So effective kasi, for example, if um, meron kang um, a certain uh, ano, no, inclinations, So you associate that with your learning, okay? You use that as your reference in your mind on 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 some of the uh, tough learning concepts dun sa subject mo, effective siya. Right? So for example, while thinking of your, your TikTok dance, okay? So inire-recite mo yung uh, yung mga concepts na diniskas ng professor mo. Okay? So again, you need to be proactive. No, you need to be proactive in your learning process. And right now, Because we are in the fourth industrial revolution, because we are in the fourth industrial revolution, kailangan start na rin natin i-embrace yung mga technologies for fourth industrial revolution. And some of these technologies, hindi naman nagre-require ng, uh, of course, so high-tech uh, devices or uh, a big amount of data. So for example, for my students, these are some of the applications that they're using. Okay? Kasi marami tayong applications na pwede natin i-download from the internet na para mas maintindihan natin yung mga topics na dinidiscuss na ating professor. And for me, I'm teaching a group of nursing students. So I'm uh, utilizing yung tinatawag nating augmented reality. Nagturo din ako, for example, doon sa ecological aspects of disaster. And I'm using also yung tinatawag nating augmented reality para mas maintindihan ng estudyante ko yung mga concepts. So guys, you all, all, all you need to do is explore kasi maraming technologies ang pwedeng gamitin ng ating mga estudyante para mas maunawaan nila yung isang subject. Katulad nito, yung heart, yung anatomy. No? So pwede natin siyang uh, palakihin, okay, pwede natin siyang i-zoom para mas makita natin yung, uh, yung, yung features ng, ng heart. And... Um, my my students, my students this this semester, meron silang mga virtual assistant. Di ba? For example, you have your your smartphones. Pwede kayong magkaroon ng virtual assistant. So for example, pwede nyo utusan yung virtual assistant nyo in your phone. Pwede nyo i-download to yung mga virtual assistant para, of course, uh, magre-remind sa inyo kung may klase. For example, kung may klase kayo ngayong, uh, ngayong araw, so pwede nyo siyang iset. Okay, so ako, ginagamit ko din yung mga, yung mga technologies na yan. So, I, I'm very fortunate kasi uh, merong uh, naka-acquire ako ng, ng isang arti- artificial intelligent uh, uh, dito, um, company dito sa aking uh, ano, no? dito sa aking pad. So, for example, if I want to brighten the light, I can do that. If I want to dim the light, I can do that. For example, Alexa, lights off, please. Okay, Alexa, Lights on, please. Okay. Alexa, can you play Spotify? Here's Spotify. But those wrongs you made wrong. Alexa, stop. Okay. Alexa, how many MB are there in 1 GB? One gigabyte is 1,000 megabytes. Okay. So you know what? I have the device. But for you with smartphones, you can download, of course, your, your virtual assistance for that. So possible din siya. You're just for us to embrace what you call yung tinatawag natin for the industrial revolution, even using our simple devices. So the internet is also full of online resources that are free and reliable. And uh, I think one of the websites that I can share with you is yung Khan Academy. Kasi for higher education, sa college level, so meron tong mga free e-books na pwede nyong i-browse. Okay? So Khan Academy is very effective pagdating natin sa, ano, sa, sa college. So meron dito mga engineering engine, uh, engineering topics. Meron din dito, of course, mga topics in, in the mathematics, in, in sciences, etc. Okay, so we need to really embrace uh, technology for us to to pioneer yung tinatawag nating uh, e-klase. But at this point, I would like to share with you one of the quotations from my idol, and that is Steve Jobs. According to Steve Jobs, technology is nothing. What is important is that you have faith in people, 
that they're basically good and smart and if you'll give them tools, they'll do wonderful things with them. So ang ibig sabihin nito guys, ang teknolohiya ay effective lamang kung ang taong gumagamit nito ay of course sanay din gumamit ng teknolohiya at adept sa paggamit ng teknolohiya. So ganun din. So ang pag ang pagkakaroon ng e-klase, ang paggamit ng Google Classroom, ang pag ang pag-attend ng mga synchronous session ay depende rin guys doon sa ating skill sa paggamit din ng mga technologies, no? So kailangan talaga embrace natin ang technologies as pas maganda explore din natin siya. And lastly, kailangan nating i-understand ang ang mga proseso. At sa pag-understand ng proseso, kailangan uh, alamin natin ano ba yung mga tips and tricks dun sa ating time uh, time management. Kasi for me, uh, para mag maging effective ang on ang online learning, kailangan dapat meron kang response, sense of responsibility sa iyong time, di ba? So kailangan mag-send ka ng limits for task, kailangan mag maging organized ka sa lahat ng mga bagay at sa akin ginagawa ko 'yan ganito. I always consider every day as a race. Na merong start at merong finish. Okay. So dahil because of the pandemic nag-work from home kami for example in, in my in, in my office and work from home kami so para mas maging productive ako as an employee or kayo as a student i always take a look at every day as a race or a marathon okay na merong start at merong finish so saan natin ilalagay yan sa ating kalendaryo okay kailangan for example you take a look at your synchronous schedules you take a look at your free time So, usually, anong oras ba dapat kayo mag-start? Kung iyan ay 8 a.m., sinet nyo yan ng 8 a.m. at ang finish time nyo ay 5 p.m., kailangan before mag-8 a.m., prepared ka na. So, meaning, uh, nakapag-breakfast ka na, nakapag-shower ka na, o kaya naman, uh, tapos mo na yung ibang mga household chores mo. So, dapat pagdating ng 8 o'clock, nandun ka na dun sa yung study space at nag-start ka na na mag-aral. Whether, whether it be an independent learning o kaya pag-attend ng mga synchronous sessions as is scheduled by your professors. So pagdating ng 5 p.m., yun na yung finish time mo. And in between, pwede kang magkaroon ng tinatawag nating mga health breaks. Okay? Pwede kang magkaroon ng mga health breaks. And usually, kapag sa e-klase, nagbibigay ng mga assignments ang ating mga professors na kailangan natin submit online. At nagbibigay din sila ng mga deadline. So for example, for me, usually, kapag ang deadline ko for my class would be 2 to 3 days, So, bibigyan tayo ng 3 days para matapos yung isang task. Ang ginagawa ko, for example, when I was a student, kapag meron mga kailangan yung submit na task or mga assignment, ginagawa ko na siya within the day. Kasi fresh pa yung learning na tinuro ng ating professor or fresh pa yung uh, independent learning gamit yung mga module na pinubayad nila. Right? So, alam nyo ba kung anong tawag doon? Kung meron tayong teacher superiority effect, kung meron tayong tinatawag na Sharon Coneta effect or the value of repetition hanggang himig ko'y maghihimig mo na rin, so meron din tayong tinatawag na Parkinson's Law. At ano nga ba ang Parkinson's Law? Pag sinabi natin Parkinson's Law, uh, ito yung prinsipyo na nagsasabi na work expands so as to fill the time available for its completion. So meaning, kailangan kapag nag-set tayo ng deadline sa ating mga sarili, huwag na natin siyang patagalin or next week ko na ipapasa yan. No. So you set a very limited time for you to complete that task because of what you call the Parkinson's law. You need to set less time to complete your work. And if you want to know more about the Parkinson's law, I would like to share with you this particular video from Nash Daily. So this is not mine. This is from Nash Daily. And I want to share this with you for you to be able to fully understand what is Parkinson's law. Oh my God, I finally understand it. Work expands to the time allowed for it. Work expands to the time allowed for it. This idea changed my life and I think it can change yours. Let's say you want to write a letter and the deadline is 10 p.m. You get a shower, you spend one hour looking for the perfect paper, another hour looking for the perfect pen, another hour thinking of the perfect words, and another writing them. By 10 p.m., your letter is done. 
But if you only had 10 minutes to write the letter, you'll skip the shower, you'll find a piece of paper, find a pen, write it down, and you're good to go. It's the same letter. One took 10 hours to make, another took 10 minutes to make. And this is work that expands to the time allowed for it. It's called Parkinson's Law and it's a real thing. It's not procrastination, it's not laziness. It's unnecessary work that we do simply because we have time. This isn't just you and me, this is entire companies. If the deadline is next month, we work every day. We add many people to the project for one month to finish it. But if the deadline is next week, magically, we can finish the project in one week. I saw this happen at my company. When something is not urgent, we take our time. We have uh, Lark to be the emergency emergency project today. Get ready, everybody. We put 10 people to work on one project, and in one month, we do something we could have done in one week. This is how big companies die. Work expands to the time allowed for it. This is a big idea. If you give yourself less time to do something, you will do good work. No hours spent finding the perfect pen. No hours wasted in meetings. No unnecessary work. So instead of finishing something next year, next month, or next week, remember Parkinson's law. Most likely, we can finish it. Tomorrow. That's more than a minute. See you tomorrow. Okay. So, yun. So, uh, for those of you who are techie or if you're part of the group, so another application that, that I'm using to, to set my schedules, for example, is yung Trello. Free, free yung lahat ng uh, mention ko na applications here. These are all free. You can get it for free. So, yung Trello, um, isang online application siya we're in, you can set. Uh, for example, yung ano yung mga dapat mong gawin, to-do list. So, ano yung ginagawa mo ngayon, yung current uh, list, and ano yung na yung mo. So, by using this this part, for example, this this uh, application online, so you can uh, effectively manage kung ano yung mga dapat natin ipasa for for each of the courses that we are enrolled. Kasi for, for this coming semester, we know that uh, it's not only three unit course, but we can have maximum of, of several courses in, uh, for this coming semester. Okay, so one very important consideration also that you need to reward yourself. Okay, for every achievement that you are creating, for example, you submitted all the course tasks on time, you need to reward yourself. Maybe uh, a good drink, okay? So maybe uh, you, you can watch... Uh, uh, some ano, during your during your leisure time okay so you need to reward yourself uh, no matter how small it is you need to reward yourself whenever you are accomplishing something and you are sending course tasks on time okay so just a um, notification for for our students so this online learning in e class eh, you expect a lot of uh, feedback from your professors. So a lot of feedback from your professors for, for the course tasks that you are submitting. A lot of uh, feedbacks for your professor in terms of your um, your uh, progress in terms of the learning process. So please remember these two uh, verses from the Bible. It's better to be criticized by a wise person than to be praised by a fool. But for, for our teachers, the man, kind words are like honey, sweet to the soul, and healthy to the body. Okay. So, yon. So, I, I want to end my, my presentation with a deep dive on understanding engagement. So, as students, how can you be more engaged into the learning process? And for you to be able to understand this, so, ang tatandaan lang natin would be the caput, the core, and the manus. Okay. Pag sinabi natin caput, okay, we're talking about the, uh, the mind, Pag sinabi natin core, you are talking about the heart. At pag sinabi natin manus, we're talking about the hand. So ito yung prinsipyo na, na tutunan ko doon sa isa sa mga organizations where I belong. Okay? Yung kaput, manus, and core. You should have, of course, the better mindset for, for learning. You have the passion to learn. 
Okay, you have the passion to learn and not to to bash, to do trolls online, etc. Because the values that we are we are showing online will uh, give an idea or on um, on the person that we are inside. And for me, I have confident that that Bulakenos are very much courteous and very much responsible uh, in terms of the online learning. Okay, so in summary, so before I started my talk, okay. So I uh, mentioned something about this online activity. So you need to answer the question, what are the qualities of a good student in online learning? So I requested you to input your uh, three words. And from your three words, no? so from your three words, okay, so ito yung lumabas na, ano, na word cloud. So a lot of you said that a good student in online learning should be flexible, and I agree with that. Kailangan kayo ay compassionate, kailangan kayo ay creative, kailangan kayo ay innovative, and of course, gusto ko yung word na resourceful or resilient. Again, engaging in online class doesn't um, entail high-tech gadgets or yung mahal na mga devices. Even at a very low-cost smartphones, you can engage in your online learning. And of course, our telco companies are providing um, a good discounts now that it, it's time of the pandemic. Okay, so it's all in the mind. It's all in your mindset. So don't be a nega during this time of the pandemic. But of course, you should have that positive mindset that everything will be okay. You should be understandable because it will reflect the values of a Bunsuan student. Okay, so I know it's almost Miranda time. So at this point, I would like to share with you my secret recipe. And this is the secret recipe of becoming a creative and innovative student in flexible e-classe or e-learning. So you need two pieces of technical competency because definitely we will be using computers. So kailangan uh, alam, alamin na yung mga controls ng Google Classroom. We, know, we need one medium utility competency slice. Kailangan sanay din tayo mag-troubleshoot. Minsan, for example, kapag na, nawala tayo sa online class, paano tayo babalik? Okay? Kailangan natin ng three slices of leadership, especially if we are working on groups. We need three strips of patience because it's not only you. You will be selfish if you will only think about yourself and not thinking about other persons, your professors, your institutions, etc. You need some guts and pitch of risk. You need that. You need two to three inch diameter of survey. Sometimes you need to, to assist your classmate. You need to, to give a helping hand. You, you need for pickled care. You need to care for yourself. You need to care for your parents. You need to care for your family. And you need to care to um, Vulcan State University as your future alma mater. And the most important for me is the character of the person. One big character slice into values and ethics. So your preparation for your E-class starts now. Because according to Socrates, let him who would move the world first move himself. And we should always walk the talk. You think, you act, you listen, and keep an open mind. So I would like to end this with a quote from my book, from my favorite novel from Dan Brown, The Origin. May our philosophies keep pace with our technologies. May our compassion keep pace with our powers. And may love, not fear, be the agent of change. With that, thank you very much. I think this is my sixth time at Bulacan State University. And I keep on uh, coming back because I have faith in your institution. I have faith in our Bulacanos. I have faith in our Bulsuans. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Professor Dino. Sigurado po ako na napakadaming natutunan ng ating mga students or front learners sa inyo. Tama po sinabi niyo, sir. Reflect and accept what is happening right now. Asahan niyo, sir, nagagawin po ng mga taga-bulsuan sa tulong ng Bulacan State University ang ilapit ang edukasyon gamit ang teknolohiya, ilipat ang classroom sa aming mga bahay, ilapat ang ating pananaw sa pag-aaral ngayong panahon ng pandemic. Tama din kayo, sir, napakadaming challenges ang kakaharapin ng ating mga frontliners. At kagaya po ng sinabi ninyo, uh, nakapagbigay po tayo ng napakagandang mga tips para po sa ating mga frontliners. 
Uh, mga students, tandaan natin na ah, you have to set boundaries and be responsible. Tandaan natin yung study space, me space, and of course, family space. Remember, kilalani ng kagamitan, kilalani ng sarili, maintain connection, understand and proactive in our learning courses, at kilalani ng proseso, at higit sa lahat ang sabi ni Professor Dino, reward yourself. And lastly, to quote ko rin sinabi niya, be creative, innovative, student, inflexible learning. Maraming salamat po muli, Professor Dino. Sigurado po akong napakadami po namin natutunan ngayong araw na ito. Thank you po, sir. All right, so let's pause for a moment for an intermission number presented by the Bulsu and Tablado. Sama lahat ay susulo. 
Thank you so much, Bulso and Tablado. At this point, we will now proceed to the question and answer portion. I believe that our audience has something in their mind to ask or clarify some issues. Okay lang po, Professor Dino, ito po yung ating unang question. Sir? Yes, yes po. Ato I'm po. Here. Sir, as a nurse po, ano po ang may re-recommend yung technique para mairaos ang isang subject na masyadong technical para ituro online? Ayan. Karaniwan po kasi sa amin, sir, may mga programming subjects, maganin po, may mga hands-on activities. Ano po kayang may re-recommend natin kapag masyadong technical ang isang lesson? Okay. So first question, are we offering um, nursing program at... Um, meron, nurses? sir. Apa, meron pa. Oh, wow. That's good. That's good. Okay, so I think this uh, question... Uh, came from uh, a teacher or an educator from the College of Nursing. So okay. for, uh, for the nursing uh, courses, for example, there are, um, there, there are things that the students need to perform. So we call it the to, to, do, no? No? to do concepts in nursing. Actually, it's not only nursing, but of course, in most courses as well, in engineering, in education, there are things that we need to, uh, to see the students on how they, they are doing it. So in my case, I'm using Flipgrid. Flipgrid is also an online tool. This is a, a free application wherein you can use it to, to show your students how to properly uh, perform a certain procedure using the things that you're using at home. Mm -hmm. Okay, and another thing, okay, so I also have uh, recorded uh, procedures. I also have recorded procedures before that, that we created. So we can also uh, do that. Return demonstration is very effective online. So instead of um, the in-person uh, presence of the teacher with the students, the students are submitting their videos, performing, for example, hand washing or performing compression for CPR. But instead of using that, uh, that model in the laboratory, they are using the pillows. Okay? Mm -hmm. So they are using the pillows or um, the things that they can, that they can actually found at home. So in some procedures, we're also sending them laboratory packets for the things that they cannot, uh, for example, purchase uh, immediately, etc. And it's part of their, I don't know, it's, it's part of their matriculation. But in um, average setup, Flipgrid is uh, a good, no? So Flipgrid is a, is a good uh, technology that we can use to train our students those uh, skills that they will be needing for, for their profession. Pero of course, uh, this pandemic will also change the mindset of our teachers. Kasi, in the normal setup, in the traditional setup, we are assessing three things. Knowledge, skills, and attitude. But in the online setup, we are assessing the three R's. Okay? Responsibility, resourcefulness, and resilience. So that's the difference between the two. Yes, there are limitations in terms of online learning, but we have tools that can replace these task-based uh, competencies. And one of which is Flipgrid in engineering, there are also resources out there that, that they can use. There are lots of uh, videos that can teach a student on how to perform it. And they can also practice at home on performing such activities. Yon, very well said, sir. Salamat po ng marami. Sir, another question dito. May ma -re recommend po ba kayo na free apps na helpful din po sa mga online classes para po sa mga walang PC sa bahay? Okay. So for, for online classes, so I think we are talking about the synchronous sessions here, the live sessions. So Google Hangouts is very effective. Google Hangouts is very effective. But I think on the part of the teachers, so major challenging siya kasi hindi ganun ka seamless yung, uh, yung interface niya for you to share your screen, unlike Zoom. Okay. For Zoom, you can get a free account, but it will last only for 45 minutes. It will last only for 45 minutes. So yung monthly subscription for, for Zoom would be $14. So this is only for the, for the faculty. I would like to clarify our students because once your faculty members ha have uh, accounts on Zoom, so you don't need to pay anything because you are, you are just the students who are, who are uh, attending the class. So for me, that 45-minute um, uh, uh, due no? or yung limitation for Zoom is very much effective na din kasi hindi effective sa, sa klase yung more than 1.5 hours. Okay, that's not effective. It will eat up the data of the students. So it's more recommended for us to chunk our discussions into manageable few. So for example, a topic on about the theories of education. So maybe we can chunk it into 40 minutes. 
okay? But uh, different sessions uh, as well. So, and daming free applications. I have a list of free app applications that I can share to our faculty Thank members. You, also. you can share it with us, sir, if you like. <laughs> of course, no, no worries. Yeah, thank you so much. So another question po from the College of Education in Bustos Campus. Ito wow. po niya. My hometown. Apa, there are many applications that students can use. So in my opinion, sabi niya po, mostly will accept lecture assignment projects among others. What should be the best app that, take, that you that you can use for our students? Parang nasagot niyo na to kanina, sir. No? Uh, yes, but I, I want to expand on that. Apa, sige po. Oh, I think majority of our, our, our faculty members will be utilizing Google Classroom. So in online learning, it's very much important for us to centralize everything. Because, for example, it would, it, would, it would be very hard for both students and for our faculty members to use different, different uh, applications at different uh, sources. So what's best about uh, Google Classroom? It is free and you can centralize all your resources there. So if you need to have an application, okay, you can just uh, integrate the application in your, in, in, in your Google Classroom so that the students can have a one-stop shop or a one-stop uh, location for all the resources for, for the learning. In terms of assessment, um, I think we should have a change of, of uh, mindset in terms of assessment because the usual uh, multiple choice questions that we previously are doing are not applicable now. So we need to um, have course tasks that are more on the output base. Kasi ang reliability and validity ng mga multiple choice exams at this time is not that high considering that their students are, are, are uh, answering the, the multiple choice questions at their home. So, nandiyan yung Google, etc. But of course, this will not restrict us from giving multiple choice questions. So, the technique is we need to change the manner on how we give multiple choice questions. We need to give questions that cannot be just Googled by the students. Right, so we need to to uh, give questions that are based on the scenario, real world scenario, okay. And we need to give MCQ questions that are situational as well. So we need to teach our students not only to Google but also to Google. Actually, sir, prepared na po ang Bulacan State University. Nagkaroon na po kami ng series of trainings regarding Bulsu, ah, G Suite Education. Very good. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, I'm very much confident that Bulsu can, oh. can really ace this. Yes, uh, sir. And mostly, sir, ng among, aming mga professor po ay Google Educator certified already. So, nakaprepare wow. na rin. Yes, of course. Congratulations. Thank and you your po. students are, are, are really fortunate that uh, they are your students. So there are uh, very few institutions out there that, uh, that really cares for their students. And I'm very confident that uh, Bulsu is one of them. All right. Sorry, ito na lang huling question yata to. May nagpapa po. So pasahin ko na lang, sir. Ah. So sabi niya sure. po, I, I do believe, sir, far from being an ide idealistic, is dealing with the realities. Not thinking about the negative side, but dealing with the real scenario. What if the standards or expectation of the course or professor is not met by the students? Okay, so we're talking about outcomes-based education oh, here. Outcome. So in outcomes-based education, we need to set certain standards at the beginning. We need to set, set certain standards at the beginning. Then after that, we see at the end if the students will be able to acquire such competencies. Okay, if there are times that, uh, for example, some of the challenges and uh, possible that this will be our uh, first time that we're going to have it. So, sabi nga nila that the best teachers are also experiences. Eh? Experiences. So, if you uh, failed in, in, in your initial attempt or if the students failed on their initial attempt because of some of the extraneous factors that affect their learning during this pandemic kasi we need to, uh, to understand that. So, you use that experience to learn what did that what I can do better next time, diba? So we can use these learnings for us to recalibrate the manner on how we deliver our, uh, our instruction and how we can make it worthwhile for our students. So recalibration is the key. Recovery. Ayan, napakahusay. Sir, last na to. Sure. Napakadami pong nag-love reactions sa ating FB Live. Tatalong, kinatalong po lang. <laughs> Pero niwan po po rin, nag-send po ng thousand of stars, sir. <laughs> ano ka lang, sir, kung single pa daw po ba kayo or taken? 
<laughs> okay, so I think that is a, a, a personal question. So I'm always single but committed to improve minus man because in our university, we embrace the values of improving minus man. So I'm always single but always committed. Ayan. No, no po namin yan, sir. <laughs> Thank you so much po. Marami pong salamat. Thank you so very much. This, okay po. Thank you po. So at this point, we will now be giving a certificate of recognition to our beloved resource speaker. Let me read now the certificate. Bulacan State University, City of Malolos, Bulacan, present the certificate of recognition to Professor Michael Joseph S. Dino for sharing his invaluable time and expertise as resource speaker in the Bulso webinar series for students, getting ready, getting steady, preparing the Bulsuan for the new normal setup of education, a webinar session entitled Discarte sa e-klase, given this today, August 19, 2020, signed by our beloved university president, Dr. Cecilia Navasero Gascon. Okay. Thank you so much, sir. Meron, may message po ba kayo, sir, before we proceed to... Um, yeah, just, just for our students. Who, yeah, so I think my, my final message for our students would be keep on believing and be brave to embrace uh, change. Okay, so face your fear students and always have that positive uh, mindset. Technologies are as effective as on the manner on how you're going to, to use it. So yeah. be good guys, be responsible students because you will be of course, our future professionals, you will uh, be our future frontliners because right now you are front learners, so you need to make the most out of it. Not all students are given this opportunity. Learning should and must continue. Yes, napakahusay, sir. Napakagaling po. Thank you so much again, Professor Dino, for your time. Alam po namin na napakadami yung commitments, pero naglaan po kayo ng time para sa Bulacan State University. Kaya it is our honor po, sir, na makasama kayo ngayong hapon. Thank you so much po. Till we meet again, sir. Hopefully. Opo, para invite po ulit kayo. Thank you po. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. Okay. Dear Bulsuan, the evaluation link as well as the preparedness survey will be posted in our comment section and FB page. Certificates will be provided for those who have completed the evaluation form. Okay, you can also watch the replay of this webinar at the FB page of the BSCA main and external campus, official YouTube channel of Bulsu, Bulsu TV Media Relation Group. Shout out nga din po pala sa mga estudyante from main campus, Sa external campuses po natin, Bustos, Sarmiento, Meneses, at Hagonoy, maraming maraming salamat po sa inyong pakikisa. We would also like to give our sincerest thanks to Bulso Saring Hibik, headed by Ms. Sir Melito Cruz, Bulso Rondalia, headed by Culture and Arts Head, Mr. Luis Agtara, Bulso Symphonic Band and Bulso Hyperdynamics, headed by Dr. Regina Danganan, Bulso Entablado, headed by Mark Joshua Malang, Dean Magdalena Gatdula and the CICT Technical Committee. Dean Godesi Leharde and CAFA for the poster and promotional materials. Dean Emelita Laganao and COET for collating the evaluation responses and the e-certificates of thousands of students participants. Of course, we give thanks to our University President, Dr. Cecilia Nabasero Gascon, Executive Vice President, Dr. Chodi San Andres, Vice President for Academic Affairs, Dr. Edgardo M. Santos. The Office of the Chancellor for External Campuses and Main Campus, Dr. Rinaldo S. Nagit and Dr. Romeo D. C. Inasoria. VCSA for External Campuses, Professor Gerald C. Hilario. And VSCA for Main Campus Associate Professor Joseph Roy Celestino. With Campus Directors, Dr. Romulo Mercado and Associate Professor Maria Adora Tigno, and the different heads of offices under the Vice Chancellor for Student Affairs. Maraming salamat po. Thank you din po kay Dr. George Arellano, Student Welfare Policy and Program Development Office, and Assistant Director Dr. Jocelyn Santos and Dr. Leonora De Jesus. All campuses and colleges dean, salamat po ng marami. To our campus and college secretaries, department and program heads, to our Bulso Guidance Office, mm -hmm. Student Government, LSE, 
different organizations and all class mayors and of course to all of you our dear students thank you so much as we about to end this webinar let me quote what mahatma gandhi said live as if you were die tomorrow learn as if you were live forever change is only scary until it becomes your new normal and remember my dear student this is just temporary we will see each other again in class as student and teacher. Thank you so much, my dear Bulsuan. See you on our next webinar. Sana makita kita po ulit tayo for our next session. And thank you so much. All right. So the last part will be, let us now watch the Bulsu March. Again, thank you very much. And good afternoon. Thank you.